In today's session, we are going to talk about dynamic automation. We see customers coming from other companies and the architects that architected their system did not account the future growth of the business. And that's something that I want to talk to you about today. If you can do it by yourself, awesome. If you need help, we can help you. But if you have a different company that's helping you, at least you can direct them to how you want your architecture to go. Obviously, you're not supposed to <laughs> tell an architect how to work, but at least you have a direction and you know what's wrong and what's right. We see companies that's coming to us. They set some automations and some processes based on, let's say, five employees in the company. When the company is growing, they need to go back to the developer again and again to make adjustments to the business flow. In some cases, that's correct because you need more functionality. But adjusting the current functionality, that's probably not supposed to be. Let me show you a direction. So let's say that when, and that's a very basic automation. When a new lead comes in, there will be one email that will be sent to the lead itself, the person that sent the lead. And also there will be some kind of a notification to the salesperson and his name is Joe. And that will be a very basic thing to do. You can send a click message, an email, create a task, SMS, WhatsApp, and so on. Lots of usages uh, to this basic automation. The problem is that if Joe is no longer with the company, you need to go back to the developer and change Joe. Or if you have now another salesperson, now Joe, would not be the one that will receive those leads. And we see also companies that will have the main person that was assigned originally, he will receive the lead and then he will reassign the lead to someone else. Lots of time going through that, you're losing leads. It's, it's a waste of time, don't do it. Another approach that I want to suggest, which is very simple, instead of assigning it to a person, you assign it to a group. So instead of signing it to Joe, you assign it to the sales team. And now whenever you have a lead comes in, it can run Robin on the sales team. And therefore, even if Joe is no longer with the company or you have multiple salespeople, it will work. For the people that don't know how to do it, in order to go to the groups, you will go to the setup, you will go to the users, and then you will go to the groups. In the groups, I will define the sales group. And now I will assign, let's say, Jeff as my one man salesperson. Okay. Now, whenever I will create some kind of an automation, and I will just go to uh, one of my leads workflows. If I would like to create any automation, and that's something that your developer probably will do, you will see that instead of assigning it to a person, I can assign it now to a specific group. And now the people assigned to the group can receive it. I can also create an assignment rule and that will be under automation assignment. And then I can create that whenever lead comes in, okay, I can assign it based on a group. Okay, and here it can be, for example, round robin or something else. Or if you, if you have also more criteria, it's fine. But the main thing is, I showed you here just one automation when most of our clients will have 10, 30, 40, 50 different types of automations. Imagine that every time that Joe is changing or other employees in the company or the company is growing, I will need to change each one of them. So it's going back to your developer or yourself, making the change, testing it and making sure you didn't blow up something else while you change this automation. Horrible. So next time, whenever you think about automation, Please think groups. 
it will shorten the time of development, will be much scalable and for sure much stable.